This is Local Matters on CBS 17 News at 4. The Republican National Convention is being closely watched by candidates here in North Carolina who will be on the same ballot as former President Donald Trump. CBS 17's Russ Bowen is here now. And Russ, you had a chance to sit down with the Republican nominee for lieutenant governor uh, to get his perspective on what he has seen in Milwaukee. That's right. Republican Hal Weatherman is running for statewide office. I asked him what he thinks of the tone of this year's convention and, and his reaction to Senator Vance being chosen as Donald Trump's running mate. He also told me how he came to tell more than 10,000 people people that there had been an assassination attempt on the former president. First off, thanks for being in here. We appreciate you taking the time to spend some time with us this afternoon. It's a big week in national politics, people around the world watching what's happening in Milwaukee. I'm sure you are too. Um, what are the takeaways for you so far as you've been watching and listening? Well, I mean, I can't miss the context of what happened this past weekend with Donald J. Trump the attempted assassination. And so I was watching, I was going to be interested in watching it anyway, but just to see how the party as a whole responds. And um, yeah, I, just the unity. I think if there's one overriding thing that I get, whether they're talking about economics or security or education or all the different platform items, just the overriding spirit of unity that America needs to be united right now more than ever. And, and things like this have a way of galvanizing the American spirit to do that. And so uh, I think it's an uplifting, positive message that's coming out of Milwaukee. We've heard from Marco Rubio. We heard from Ted Cruz. Theirs were, uh, their speeches were a little more spirited than, say, some of the others, uh, including our current lieutenant governor, who was uh, a little more low-key than we're, we're used to. Um, talk to me about how you thread that needle, though, to not get go over the line but still have a spirited campaign message. What I would hope is we do it in such a way, and I think they're doing that, uh, that it spells out the differences, the compare and contrast, without getting into the nasty. I, I personally reject uh, negative campaigning. I've never liked it, uh, don't believe in it. Uh, uh, and if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And so I love that our party is clearly articulating the differences on all the major issues with the other side, but doing it in a unifying way that basically set, leaves it up to the people. Here's what we believe, and uh, either you believe that and follow us, or you go the other direction. I think the vast majority of America is ready for a change, uh, and you're gonna see that in November. Take me back to last weekend uh, when we were learning everything about the attempted assassination. Yeah. I, I can only imagine what you were thinking and feeling when we were all just waiting to find out the how the president, former president, was doing. And also, what, what were your thoughts moving forward in the hours after that, knowing that he was okay in terms of what this might mean for the party, what this yeah. might mean for the campaign? Well, I was at Hickory Motor Speedway. Uh, when it happened. So um, I'm kind of doing the speedway circuit now uh, as I campaigned for lieutenant governor. And uh, there were about 12,000 people there. And I'd already been asked to give the opening remark. I was the grand marshal for the race. And um, the, the crowd didn't know. The crowd didn't know at all that Trump had, you know, an, an assassination attempt had happened uh, because there was no internet service there, basically. And so I got up to speak, and instead of speaking, spe instead of giving a partisan speech, I just felt led. I'm a believer. I felt led to uh, lead us in prayer. And so we had 12,000 people stand up and pray, you know, I led them in prayer. And um, so that's, you know, the first thing was to, how do we pray for our country? How do we pray for Donald Trump? How do we bring people together? And that spirit was clearly, if you were there, you would, you would have felt that spirit there of everyone just hoping for the best and hoping that we start to unite uh, as a party. Um, you know, I don't like to think about the political ramifications of it at all. Um, I think from a societal standpoint, I really do think things like this bring people together. And I think you're gonna see that reflected in the polls. I think you're gonna see it reflected in the campaign styles. I mean, even the Biden campaign immediately pulled down their attack ads. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. I, I think America needs that right now. If you were a betting man, did you think this, that J.D. Vance would be at the top? Or did you have your, you know, were you looking somewhere else? I mean, I think it's consistent with Trump to pick someone who, yes, he's a, he's a, he's a politician, but relatively new politician. Yeah, a year and, and a half. A year and a half, and I think that's very consistent with, uh, with Trump. Uh, with what he was probably looking for, someone more perceived to be an outsider. He's got an amazing resume. Uh, I read his book uh, before I even knew anything about him. I had a friend recommend his book. Which is back in the top bestseller list. Oh, yeah, it's and, it's, and it's, a, it's a phenomenal. His story is phenomenal. For people who don't know, it's Hillbilly Elegy, and it's a memoir yep. of his time growing up in Appalachian. What yeah, he and really, exactly. And um, so, you know, kind of a rags to riches story, success, served his country in the military. Um, very good in the private sector, did very well, uh, married well, 
And uh, I think he brings a lot to the ticket demographically. He's, he's Catholic. I think there's, there's, some, there's some advantages to bring that in uh, as well. And he's got a very diverse family, and I think it's great. And I think he'll do well. You know, what I'm looking for um, for him, I was looking for, th for this for any vice president, is how will they compliment Donald J. Trump? How will they compliment him? I mean, when you have a force of nature like Donald Trump, uh, he needs someone to play more of a supporting role, uh, sometimes more behind the scenes. How will he advance the America First agenda? And will he help this unification effort? What are you going to be looking for from Donald Trump when he takes the stage? We know very well he's talked about the fact that, you know, the speech has been toned down. He had what he called a, quote, humdinger of a speech written. Yeah. Doesn't sound like that's going to be the speech we hear. Yeah. Um, what are you hoping to hear? What do you expect to hear? I hope to hear exactly what I'm hearing. I'm on the road every day campaigning for lieutenant governor, so I'm all over the state. Um, and what I'm hearing from people is it's not that they want a toning a down of the rhetoric. They want a unification. I, I, I've said it repeatedly here today. They want, they want to see America start to unify. The, the problems that we face as a country are too big for us to tackle as Republicans or as Democrats. We have to tackle them as Americans. And so, and I think Trump knows that. You know, I, I can't put myself in his shoes. I don't know what it's like to have a near-death experience. Uh, but I would imagine um, that it wakes you up. It wakes you up inside in, 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 the, in the stirrings of your soul and reminds you of what's most important. Al Weatherman, Republican nominee for Lieutenant Governor in North Carolina. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks, I hope you'll come back as we get closer anytime. to the election and we can talk more about your specific race anytime. heading into November. Yeah, anytime. Thank you again. And I did reach out to the Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor Rachel Hunt. Her campaign declined this particular interview request, but you can see my previous interview with her at CBS17.com. I also just got back from Rocky Mount, where I called up with the Republican nominee for the 1st Congressional District. So coming up at 530, I'll have Lori Buckout's take on the RNC as well. Guys. All right, Russ, good work. Thank you. Bye.